a lot of damage occurs to endoscopes by carry, being carried incorrectly. Uh, the best way we feel for anybody to carry a fiber scope would be to pick up the body of the scope, put your, th your thumb behind the wheels, get your light guide probe and put that in that hand and with your small finger get a hold of your patient tube. That way if you go through a door, the door is likely to hit you in the back before trapping the scope. What is really important to preserve the life of the scope is to make sure that the distal tip is straight before introducing anything through the biopsy port here. In order to check that the tip is straight, the best thing we've come up with here is the U and the L on the wheels here are lined up together and just behind the red button. As you'll see, the tip is now quite straight. What is important to make sure that the biopsy forceps prior to being introduced through the biopsy port is to make sure that they are closed and not open thus. If they are opened and they are introduced into the biopsy channel then you are going to cause a lot of damage. Okay. In order to feed through, take the port off the biopsy cap and just feed that through and with short movements feed your instrument or cleaning or cytology brush through. Don't feed too far away because as you can see what happens here it can cause a kink. The kink will eventually become sharp and it will cause a lot of damage in the inside of the skull. Once you're impatient and you're introducing your forceps, once you come through the tip then you can manipulate the tip to any angle that you like and then you can open your forceps and then close your forceps and grab and that takes your, your actual biopsy step. So your main danger areas of any scope are going to be anywhere where there's glass and metal, so i.e. your distal tip, your light guide post and your eyepiece. Avoid dropping or hitting any of these parts on a hard surface on a table. If a vet during the procedure becomes tired, make sure that that angle doesn't become too acute. If you see the vet start to do that, just bring them up slightly to take the bend out of there, which takes the strain off the end of the scope. What we're also looking for as well is if you, to increase your angle, is to make sure that if you rotate the body of the scope, that you rotate the patient tube at the same time. You don't go against each other, because if you do, all you're going to do is give the scope a Chinese burn, which will effectively destroy the light guide fibers in here. Storing of the scope ideally is hanging up with the patient tube inside of a protective uh, whether it be a down pipe or a drain pipe or something like that. If it's not going to be stored like that, you haven't got the facilities and it has to be stored in the storage case. When you put the scope away, make sure that the end of the tip is safely tucked into the case and don't jam the case on top of the, um, the patient tube. You will cause irreparable damage. It is important after the procedure that before the vet hands you the scope for cleaning, um, we do a couple of things. First of all, we would wipe down the patient tube with a disinfectant wipe to remove any pathology from the scope, from the body of the scope. What I would also ask them to do is to press and hold the blue button for a few seconds until you get a good stream of water coming through. That way the equipment can be left for some time before you get the chance to clean it because the patient is, is paramount 